Hey, Manufacturing World, welcome to another episode of Shop Matters, sponsored by Okuma America Corporation. We are coming live from IMTS 2022 in the Okuma booth, and I am super excited to have my buddy John Saunders joining me here today from Saunders Machine Works. Thanks for having me, Wade. It's good to be here. John, I can't, uh, can't describe how excited I am to have you here in the booth. We've been working pretty close here over the last year or two, and uh, it, it's fun to actually get here and be able to have a, a face-to-face chat with you in front of everybody and have this going out live. So appreciate you being here. Totally agree. And I'll tell you, after the last two or three years that we've lived in, it's, it's actually great to see people. It really is. It's Isn't exciting. It cool? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Great. I'm glad things are back. You know, we talk about doing things in a virtual environment, and we did the virtual show last year, and, and we did a lot of videos. We did some, some things to try to do as best we could. But it's just something else. I can smell the coolant <laughs> rolling off that LU3000 behind me. And yeah. that's just, you can't describe right. how cool that is, right? Agreed. Agreed. So, How's the show going for you guys? It, it has been amazing. Um, you know, we come into this thing with optimistic, high hopes mm-hmm. that it's going to be busy. And Monday at 930, it, it started jam-packed. And okay, so Monday was good. So then you're thinking, okay, was that a one hit? What's right. Tuesday going to look like? Tuesday's been packed. Wednesday's been packed. It's been absolutely amazing. I've been ping ponging around like a, a ping pong at a college uh, at a college event somewhere, you know. Yeah. So it's it's been a lot of fun. We've really had a good time with it. What are you seeing? How have you enjoyed the show? Oh, it's it's great. Like I said, it's great to be here. Um, I enjoy. You know, it's a mix because you want to learn, but you also want to see what you don't know. And it can be hard. It can be hard to walk through a trade show and poke your head into a booth that's a company you don't know or a process you don't know. But that's what it's all about yep. is, is learning and pushing yourself outside your comfort zones. Right. Um, and so it's been great. Yeah. I'm glad I've got two more days. I'll have four full days here, which is which I'm going to use them all. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got to do a, a quick chat over there in the AMT booth last night. And they wanted to give five pieces of advice, you know, if you could tell a younger you. Okay. And I could only, you know, my, my brain just, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a slow thinker to process things. I said, well, I've got one that really stands out to me, and that's don't be an expert. Because if you're an expert, you lose that lust to continue to learn and find what's the new tidbits that's new and right. exciting. Yeah. So to me, don't be an expert. Get in there and just find out what's cool. So yeah. what's as you've been around the show, anything stand out to you that just jumps out? And you're like, holy cow, that's cool. I'm glad I came and saw this. I mean, my advice would be, I, I guess, two things. Number one, I do find that when I'm at the show, you're sort of in a overstimulated environment and it can be difficult to focus or come up with a plan because yeah. every time you turn a corner, there's more machines running, which I still get really excited about. Some people right. may not, but like, <laughs> it's just really cool. I mean, we're looking here, seeing robots and turrets and so forth. Yeah. So, so I have a uh, notepad list that I refer back to on my phone that sort of says, John, before you leave IMTS, these are the three things that you actually came here to do and learn yeah. um, and come up with a plan around that. Um, but the other thing I'm really glad I did is I brought a couple parts. We're trying to think about uh, some new things that we need to be adding and and, and uh, more capability within our shop. And it's kind of like what you said a minute ago about Zoom versus being in person. Well, being able to walk up to a vendor, or a supplier, a machine tool builder and hand them a part, you can just sit back and watch the wheels turn. And that's so much better than a picture or a print. So right. if you're coming to the show to look at machining or processes, bring your part. That's awesome. Yeah, fantastic. Yep. So you, let's see, how long has it been? You took delivery of a Genosim 660. Has that been a year now? No, I think it, so you, so this was a big, yeah, but we drove down to Charlotte in uh, June or July, I think. It was, I'm pretty sure it was the summer months. Yep. Because I was, nervous isn't the right word, but it was a big purchase. And I had this thesis about what this machine could do for us. uh, And I was pretty sure it would work, but I wanted that chance to come actually spend time on the machine. And so it was really uh, great. We appreciated being able to come down uh, and have that. We literally drove down with the, in our truck with our fixtures and our tooling and uh, set up on the machine and cut yeah. some chips and then ordered the machine. And yeah, we've been running it since November. It was kind of a fun conversation. You were asking me some questions about tolerances and surface finish. I said, why don't you bring your part down? Let's, yeah. let's see. So yeah. that was pretty cool. So what's your experience been with the machine so far? Uh, the, the it's funny because I want to talk more about the horizontal because the yeah, three. I want, to, the, I want to jump into that. So, <laughs> so we we bought the Genos M660, which is you know 
I'm guessing there's one of those for every 10, 560s there are out there. But we wanted the larger footprint and the travel. Um, we would like that machine because it has the, the dual column design. So right. regardless of where the table is and why, we have equal tool pressure. Um, we wanted the kinematic design, the build quality, and we wanted that big plus dual contact spindle. All of those reasons we thought were key to the surface finish, step over lines, and parallelism tolerance to our product. Right. That was the thesis. Like it, it was kind of one of those, if it doesn't meet those, it's it'll have been a failure. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was not only the machine tool, but it was how we programmed it, how we tooled it up, and honestly, the foundation and the level. We, were, we I know every person that installs a machine probably says, hey, I really want this thing dialed in, I want it level, but we really wanted it level and having that head tram perfectly. Uh, and it's been, it was great from the start and it hasn't moved on us. That's it's great. continuing, we'll use a uh, 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 MAR gauge, uh, one of the 50 sure. millionth gauges, and we're measuring between one and one and a half microns on our step over lines, hmm. which is exactly what we wanted. It's yeah, great. That's beautiful. Yeah. So then more recently, you took delivery of a horizontal with a pilot pool, one of our MB4000s with a, was it a six APC? Yeah, okay. six APC. So what has the transition been like? When I got to visit your shop, you were pretty much all vertical machining centers. This is your first transition into a horizontal machining center. What was that transition like? So it, it, I think we had an inverse experience because I had a friend who just did the same thing. And he, he had texted me and said, boy, buckle up. You're going to be blown away at how much time and hassle this is going to be to fix it up, tool it up, program it. Hmm. And so I kind of went into it thinking, oh boy, this is going to be hard. Um, and we got the machine. We had two tombstones ready. We put the tombstones on the MB4000. I'd already programmed the fixture tool pass to, to machine the fixtures uh, location mounts. Then we literally took fixtures off our verticals, bolted them onto the tombstones, reposted our cam with a different post. We took the tools out of the vertical, moved them over with different pull studs, and we were running within four days. No kidding. That's it was, incredible. Couldn't have been easier. Now, that was the easy part. Where it's gotten hard is now we're improving those fixtures, we're redesigning them, we're adding more programs onto it. Okay. Um, we got the big tool matrix, which is a big reason why we wanted that spec of the machine mm -hmm. was I don't want to have issues where I'm limited on the tool capacity. I want dedicated face mills by product line. I want dedicated end mills. I want dedicated finishers so okay. that I just don't have these worries or concerns. Um, and so adding all of that, you know, getting the tools, buying the holders, setting them up, um, it's been for sure more work, but, but I love it. It's been super fun. Oh, that's awesome. So tell me your experience. How do you utilize the pallet pools? So people have different philosophies on how they utilize automation, whether they set it up and they, they run the same part on every pallet and they just want to load up and get the same parts run through with unmanned operation, or they set it up for flexibility to go from part to part to part. Yeah. What's, what's your take on it? How have you approached that? You said don't be an expert. I'm still very much in that I'm listening to uh, advice more so than I'm preaching here. Um, what we did, it's actually a great story. We got the horizontal online, and about two weeks after, we got a single order that took us five months of almost matching our existing production to date to complete that order. So one of those, it's a really good day, except you realize, holy how are we going to do this? Right. Um, and, and no joke, there's no way we could have done it. Congratulations, we, you got you. the order, but now, oh yeah, my yeah, gosh, we right. got the order. Right. So, but it worked out. For those that have listened to our story and our podcast, we had a home-built ERP system. Uh, we knew our capabilities. We knew the number of business days between now and the due date. And so we just started doing basic math. And we said, we need to make 37 of these every day, 24 of these every day. And so in a weird way, it changed the way that we integrated the horizontal because instead of taking the first six months to roll on new products as I went, we had it basically focused on three products for four or five months and it just cranked. Um, but it, what I want to say is we bought that machine knowing it would be more productive and you know all the things you hear about with the horizontal, but I still... I wasn't excited about it in the sense that horizontals aren't what usually people get super excited about a machine tool these days. Right. But my theory or my belief has completely changed because if you run a vertical machining center, 
which is what I have run to date. Here's how I now think about a horizontal. First off, it's a, it's a free machine because all, all the work, if you're running verticals now and that's all you're running, the horizontal is going to be able to do everything you need it to do after hours. Right. So you now have a free spindle during the day, which is huge. So you kind of have two spindles for the price of one. But then I realized, wait a minute here, we have six pallets. So now I have six different fixture setups that can live there all the time. So it's kind of like having a vertical where if you hit one button, it switches between vices or fixtures or vacuum or, or whatever you have. Right. But it's not six because tombstones don't have one side to them, some two, three, four, whatever. So yeah. that ability to have a machine tool where, and that's how we use it during the day. We're doing prototyping, R&D, fixture making, that kind of stuff. And then when we're done, we just flip the switch and it goes back to running the Saunders Machine Works products. That, that's amazing. I love it. It's probably not a unique story, but I'll tell you, living through that makes me way more passionate. You know, I was joking with you. If somebody wants to buy a horizontal with just, I don't know what you call it, just the two tombstones, yeah. call me because I'm going to tell them not to, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. yeah. Don't do it. Start with the pallet pool. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I got to visit a shop recently um, out on the West Coast, and the the design, the gentleman made his own fixtures, and the design, I, I don't want to give the company away. I, I didn't get a chance to talk to him, so I don't know if I could throw his name out there or not. But he maximized the swing capacity. So most horizontals, you walk up, and well, you look at that MA-8000 out there and the size of the, <laughs> the volume. I mean, that that's jaw-dropping, right? Well, he's got a 5000, so the machine sitting behind here. And he maximized the volume capacity on it, and he's got parts. He built his own in a, in a round circular pattern. He stacks up 22 parts. He gets hours of runtime out yeah. of it. And literally, I mean, there, there couldn't have been 50 thousandths clearance <laughs> going around that. I mean, the guy got that's awesome. the most he could get yeah. out of it. It's yeah. incredible. And, and that's what he does. He has a setup guy. He spends about four hours a day of paid labor setting up that horizontal and oh, getting yeah. everything out. And then he's out, and yeah. that machine just sits there and runs and runs and runs. And it's that's the side I think people miss the boat on horizontals. There's yeah. just so much benefit you can get out of it. So I'm I'm a I'm a horizontal fan. I can talk for days on horizontals, but yeah. that's that's incredible. I love hearing your story on it. There's so many people that go through it, but they can't articulate it. And yeah. you're able to to take that transition and really articulate it in a way that everybody can really understand it. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your training. You've you've got some new training programs going. Uh, talk through that a little bit. Tell us that's some exciting stuff. Yeah, thank you. So um, kind of one of those things that I never planned, but four or five years ago, we had folks reaching out to us through our you know YouTube audience and sort of said, hey, come to my shop or facility and train me. And I, I didn't want to do that. It didn't feel like it was going to scale and just wasn't, you know, had a young family. So we just sort of said, hey, come to us. And we started offering training classes and they proved to be really popular, and we ran them. Uh, I think we had 700 students prior to COVID. Um, and our, you know, our shop is in Zanesville, Ohio. This is not Chicago or a major right. Charlotte. Yeah. Um, and so that that was really humbling. And, and they were great classes. We shut them down with COVID, and I wasn't sure if they were going to come back. And then we had the chance. Oh, well, really, not the chance. We had the sort of buy it or or move on chance to buy the building next door. And I t talked about this in a recent video where I realized. If somebody else buys that building, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick myself. Um, and when I started thinking about how I could justify buying the building, because we're we're running out of sh uh, sh uh, space in our shop, but not to the point of telling my wife, sweetie, I'd like to buy a building so I can buy more machines. I'm not right. ready. I'm not ready for that conversation. <laughs> but then I realized, wait a minute here, we could have a dedicated training facility. Um, yeah. and, and no joke, I, I love. Uh, I really enjoy. The stuff that we do. I mean, I enjoy running machines, but the chance to inspire people, to teach people, to educate people, to help them make better biz decisions as machinists, as business owners. Um, the training classes are what I wanted when I was stuck in my New York City apartment. No, you can't just walk up to a machine shop, knock on the door and say, can I have an apprenticeship? Can I hang out for two days and shadow you? So we offer three-day classes that give folks the chance, you know, within the first three hours, you're hitting cycle start at that class. And then yeah. you're making soft shells. You're making three parts. Um, so we, we're offering them. They've been. Uh, we've had two since we opened the new building. We're sold out through the end of the year. Uh, we're hoping to add five axis and turning next year. Um, so that's yeah. the story. Well, that's awesome. I, I appreciate everything you do for the industry. It's guys like you that really make manufacturing and machining cool again. It's bringing a lot of young talent into our field. So you're doing a lot for the industry. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. 
Thank you for joining us here today and taking the time. I know this is a busy time, and I appreciate you taking the time to spend with us here in the Yakuma booth and talking with us. Thank you, Wade. And I'll tell you, uh, on a sort of shameless, humble brag, uh, you know, we all have those moments in our career that stand out. And I started this company in my New York City apartment, just wanted to learn machining. And today, being able to walk around to that MB5000 and see the Saunders Machine Works logo on it and to have our products displayed on one of your machines is really an honor. And, and I should have even said that during our thing, but you've got a fixture and, yeah. and everything set up on that MB5000 back there. We appreciate so that. Thank take you, Take the time to see it. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.